So as I recall, it's only ever mentioned once in the entire show. Do you remember what exactly is Chandler Bing's job? Oh, he's a transponster. In the Friends Cinematic Universe, the character of Chandler Bing is known primarily for two things. Being sarcastic as all hell, and having a job so boring and dull, nobody in the show actually knows what it is he does for a living. As it turns out, this job actually pays so much money it allows Chandler to function as his roommate's sugar daddy for three years straight. So this roommate, Joey, right? No, of course it's Joey, yeah, who throughout the show's run is consistently, bar for like the last season or so, where he starts to have a little bit of success, portrays a struggling actor with like less career prospects than like a member of Game of Thrones who isn't Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Have you ever heard like one of the roles that made Peter Dinklage famous, obviously before Game of Thrones? No. It was a, a movie that he stars in alongside Gary Oldman called Tiptoes, which is about a dwarf. And guess what role Peter Dinklage plays? The, the dwarf? No, no, he plays like, you know, a side character. The dwarf is played by Gary Oldman, who walks around on his knees. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> like, Wait, so they, they had Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage on their film? Yeah, and they and they got Gary Oldman, who is a fantastic actor, but, and obviously he's chameleonic in his, like, you know, his ability to portray the character. But I don't think he can shrink three foot. And throughout the movie, it's very clear that he's just walking around on his knees, his shoes on. You got it? Fine. Apparently, Peter Dinklage isn't mad at the movie because he says it was like, you know, Quite a good movie, but he got butchered in editing. Yeah. So he was like, you know, quite like a, a good portrayal of people like, you know, with this condition, but they butchered it in editing. But it's more the fact that they had Peter Dinklage right there. Like future double Emmy Award winning actor Peter Dinklage. But then again, they also had Gary fucking Oldman, but it's the idea that they made Gary Oldman walk around on his fucking knees. <laughs> and that's what you can see it. Because it's like his body's so out of proportion. He's got really long arms. It looks like E.T. or some shit. It's so <laughs> offensive. So with this back to Friends, how much money does Joey owe Chandler? We never actually find out in any episode of the show, but it's hinted at multiple times that it's quite substantial. And the closest we ever get to like direct confirmation is immediately after Joey appears in a movie, oddly enough alongside Gary fucking Oldman, playing like some apparently famous actor in the Friends cinematic universe. And he invites Chandler to the premiere, Chandler falls asleep, Joey gets annoyed, says I'm going to pay you back for all the money that I owe you. Okay, so how much do I owe you? What? Give me a number. I don't want to owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. I don't want your money. Ah, 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 we're doing this. And what he does is they sit down with a piece of paper and Chandler lists through all the things that he paid for over the years, like a couple of years of rent, acting lessons, headshots, that sort of thing. And what Joey does then is he takes all that information, calculates roughly how much he owes Chandler for all those years he was helping him out, takes one look at the figure and decides to immediately forgive him and move past the whole thing. So I'm writing you a check for... So you fell asleep during my movie. <laughs> Big deal, right? <laughs> and as you watch that scene back, one thing you should keep in mind is that Joey just had a starring role in a major motion picture. So it's not like he's exactly hurting for money at that moment. So the amount on that piece of paper must be pretty fucking big. <laughs> How do you clear this thing? <laughs> Also as well, Chandler doesn't seem that bothered that Joey isn't going to pay him that money back like ever. No, and that's the weirdest thing about it, obviously. It's very clearly a substantial amount of money. Like enough where an, a guy who's just appeared in a, like a, a motion picture as like one, in one of the starring roles doesn't have enough money on hand to pay it back without bankrupting themselves. And he's like, oh no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And that's not the only time in the series where ca like Chandler casually just throws away like what almost amounts to tens of thousands of dollars. Because then you have his marriage to Monica in the lead up to which like, there is an entire episode dedicated to Chandler and Monica arguing about whether or not Chandler should pay for Monica's dream wedding with his savings. Well, you're not suggesting that we spend all of the money on the wedding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I think they eventually settle on, like, you know, Monica's, like, Plan B wedding. A fan of Friends with more time on their hands than us has calculated that that Plan B wedding actually cost about sixty fucking thousand dollars Remember, this was Monica's, like, you know, less extravagant option, and Chandler paid it all out of pocket, but was still willing to pay for the full, ginormous, huge wedding completely out of pocket, which he said would have, like, basically depleted all of his savings. It does make Monica sound like a horrible person, though. She wanted to get rid of 
his entire savings he'd set aside for their family yeah, their for future. a single, I mean, party, as he put yeah, it. Yeah, that's the thing. I think Chandler is completely justified in feeling annoyed about that because think about it. Like He's been saving up for literally decades at that point, like working a job he fucking hates to save up money for presumably before that for his future for his retirement and then obviously when in monica for their future and she looks at it takes one doesn't even consider why he'd have that money and immediately says let's spend it all on me we can always earn more money okay but if we're only gonna get married once look i understand but i have to put my foot down okay the answer is no and then when he says like no i'm not letting you do that she gets annoyed about the fact she can't spend his entire life savings on a party what do you want to well, what do you want to spend the money on a house a future i uh, know a life for us both oh wow that's stupid why don't we just spend it on a party it's like, oh, it's like so bad she just sounds so inconsiderate it's horrendous let's just appreciate for a second how nice chandler actually is like, yeah because at the end of the episode he turns around and says if that's what you want yeah. we'll do it i will completely drain the entirety of my life savings so you can have one day where you feel special and he's, he's fine with it. And not to mention that all this money he's already went to Joey. But he probably he could probably pay for the wedding if he asked for the money back from Joey. Think about that, man. Holy shit. I think there was an episode where Joey gets a hernia and he's like lying on the floor. His insurance, his health insurance lapses. And Chandler comes in and goes, I'll pay for you to go to the hospital. Don't worry about it. Look, I will loan you the money. Just go to the hospital and let's just get that thing push back in. <laughs> I don't know a lot about America or the healthcare system specifically, but what I do know is that that shit's not cheap. I'll pay for your hernia operation out of pocket when you have no insurance in the middle of New fucking York and don't worry about paying me back. Think about that. All the, like, there's all the little moments where I'm wondering how many, like, how many times they go out for pizza and Chandler must have just paid for it. Just like whip ten dollars out. Especially if Joey's there, because he's got to buy two pizzas every time. Yeah, and obviously they're in their apartment all the time. Like he pays for the TV, the cable, all the bills. Like he buy, he goes one. I've seen he buys all new furniture. I was just say there's an episode where he refurnished the entire apartment out of guilt. Duck and chicken food for all those years. And it, that doesn't bankrupt him. You never see him in trouble in later episodes. The only time he ever is is when he's living with Monica, and like he quits his job. Yeah. And we never really tell you how long they've quit their job for. But I'm, I'm, the only reason I'm assuming that is obviously because he quits a really high paying job evidently and there was like, dip, and he doesn't want to nip into his savings which is apparently for his house. So that's the only time you ever see him like really struggling for money is when he quits his job and he's basically like, they're living on one income. But they're living on one income and they were used to living on Chandler money. Wow, hello, Mr. Chandler. <laughs> So if people worked out the amount from the wedding, has anybody worked out how much Joey actually does owe Chandler? Yes, another fan, like obviously Big Dick Hero right there, has like calculated roughly how much Joey owes Chandler based on you know, the list they go through during that episode we mentioned previously. And the amount they come to was about $100,000, which is fairly steep and it's quite a substantial amount for like, you know, a guy to be like, oh no, that's fine. So I'll be honest, if someone owed me a hundred grand, I'd be getting our fucking godfather on their ass. <laughs> like they, would, they would have me outside their house with a baseball bat and a horse's head, just swinging rocks at their window every day until I got that shit back. But Chandler doesn't mind. And people are wondering, well, where does that money come from, obviously? Some of it comes from like Joey's acting lessons, like food, bills, that sort of thing. But the majority comes from rent, because there is a joke in like one of the episodes about the apartment Monica lives in, it's rent controlled. And the law behind that is that Monica's grandmother lived in the apartment since like the 1930s and she was on rent control, which basically locked the rent in place. And people have worked out that could be as low as like $100 a month, depending on like how far back it goes. However, Joey and Chandler's apartment in the first season, that is not rent controlled. And the New York Post is calculated based on the rough area that it is and the, and the square footage they can estimate that that apartment would cost roughly $3,000 per month, which Chandler says he pays for about three years, in, then bills, then food, then acting lessons, then headshots, all that other bullshit. I think we even have in one episode, like, the bills themselves aren't cheap because I think, doesn't Chandler hand Joey the bills? He takes one look at how much it costs to run the apartment and he immediately starts turning off all the lights because that's how much it fucking costs. This is how much we pay for electric? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he paid that out of pocket without even thinking about it while simultaneously like, doing all the other bullshit they do, like paying for like four dollar cups of coffee and like, drinking like 40 of them a week <laughs> and then probably presumably paying for all of Joey's as well. But like a hundred thousand dollars, like even if you just go back to like the rent. So I think the New York Post works out. Yeah, this apartment conceivably 
in like 90s money would be like $3,000 a month like for Joey and Chandler and Chandler's paying it all. For Chandler to even be able to afford like, you know, to pay all this and then save up as much as he presumably has for the wedding, he must be earning about $10,000 a month after tax in 90s money. Oh, like, Mr. That, that, Bing. Well, that's the thing as well, because the, the, the theory is then that like, Chandler might actually very well be a fucking millionaire, which is why Phoebe looks at his saving and goes, well, well, well then. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like, he might be a fucking multi-millionaire and it's never mentioned in any episode. Because if you think about it as well, go back to like Chandler's youth. Like, like isn't his mum like a famous author? And his dad like runs like the burlesque show in Vegas, and then you go see flashbacks to his childhood, and he's got like a pool boy and a maid yeah, and cause, shit. Because they sleep with a pool boy, don't they? Yeah, but that's where they both sleep with the pool boy. He's got a pool boy and a maid and a really like a fancy, opulent as shit house, and he lives there. So presumably he must be getting shit on. He must be looking for a pretty sizable inheritance when his parents pass away. That's why they can't do like a friends reunion because Chandler would just be coming in as Mr. Moneybags. While yes, you do have to keep in mind that these figures are the best guesses of people based on various figures throughout the show that aren't fully explained. I do think it's quite hilarious that throughout the initial run of the show in the first few seasons, Chandler being is shown as being perpetually unable to get laid when presumably all he would have had to do is put a copy of his bank statement in his wallet when he went out. So we had a rant about a year ago or so about okay. how Ross is the worst friend. Oh, yeah, he is. He's, Ross is the fucking worst. I hate him. But then we've just talked about how Chandler's a good friend. Who do you think is the best friend? I mean, it's got to be Chandler. Like, just in terms of the amount of stuff he does for other people, like, he bails Joey out time and time again. Like, even the most conservative estimates of how much Joey owes Chandler says that Chandler gave like Joey tens of thousands of dollars and then never asked for it back. Like, he offers to pay for like, you know, his, his wife's like, a dream wedding out of pocket, like deplete his entire life saving just to make her happy. I think the only friend who comes close is maybe Joey himself in later seasons when he starts earning money from acting. And he again like starts being really like, you know, helpful. Like, I think he offers to like pay their Chandler and Monica's rent for like a couple of months, like right three like three thousand dollars out of pocket for like, fuck you, nothing. It's fine. I'm a big dick actor, why not? So he even makes that joke and he's like, whoa, what do you think I am? Like a television soap star. It's like, yeah, you're damn right I am. Let's get the checkbook out. But no, all the other friends are horrendous people. Well, the difference with Joey there, though, is that Joey is a really nice friend, but a terrible human being. No, it's, I think Joey's really nice. Have you not seen the way, no, the way he treats women is terrible. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, does he ever, uh, in any episode, portray himself as anything other than, like, you know, that kind of guy? He does, however, tell Rachel that um, Chandler always used to make pancakes for the girls he sleeps with and tell them, <laughs> tell them that he wasn't interested and send them on their way. Yeah, that's kind of a bad so, I mean, that episode's shown as a growing point for Joey where he decides he wants to spend more time with a woman and she yeah. turns him down. But then that does mean that the entire time Chandler was there, not only was he paying all his bills, yeah. he was oh. also kicking out his Which women. Which means he's an even better friend than he was. Because not only that, he was wingmanning for him in the morning. He was being a wingman and a sugar daddy at the same time. He was being a wing sugar daddy. A sugar wingman. What's the we're going to create something here? There's a portmanteau of words. He was a wingman and a sugar daddy. Sugar wings. Sugar wings. Wing sugar. Wing daddy. He wing was daddy. a wing daddy. Wing daddy. daddy. Chandler was Joey's wing daddy. There it is. There's the title for this episode. <laughs> to give you a clue, what the fuck is a wing daddy? The Chandler the wing daddy. <laughs> it's so good. You need to pull that behind me. It's a picture of Chandler. It's underneath it. Wing daddy. We've done a video for a while. Shit on Ross as a character. So let's you know what. Let's go back and say like my favourite Ross moment. And that's the one where the guy at his office steals his fucking sandwich. Because that, to me, is one of the most infuriating episodes to watch back as an adult. Because as a kid, it's, you know, it's funny looking at the man getting angry. But as you get older, I realise, like, Ross is 100% right in that situation. He had a sandwich in his work fridge that was his, with his name on it, and his boss comes in and eats it. And Ross's reaction is completely justified. Why the fuck did you steal my sandwich? I'm having a really rough time. I was looking forward to that shit all day. You took it, and the guy says, oh, I just took it out of the fridge. That was my house now. And he pretends it's not a big deal. It's, no, it's a big fucking deal. You took, you stole someone else's fucking property. Then his boss offers him a bin sandwich. Yeah, he says like, oh yeah, I threw it away. So you didn't even eat it. There you might took... be something left in the trash. I'll get it for you. So, so he's that dickhead at the office who just steals people's food and then says it's not a big deal. But isn't he also like Ross's boss? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and then he gets him like put on hiatus because he's angry with him for him stealing his shit. Yeah, I think Ross gets put on sabbatical and then they they kick him out. I don't, don't think he, no, he comes back for one day and then gets kicked out again for getting angry. But it's the thing of like, you stole his sandwich, he acts in a completely justified manner of, why the fuck did you do that? Explain yourself. And his boss goes, uh, 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 you're fired. 
What a crap. I hate that guy. Like, that episode was so infuriating to watch. But I'm like, I am, well, for the first time this entire season, this entire show, I'm on your side, Ross. Because that's a fuck. <laughs> I've had that happen to me at work before. Yeah. When I used to work, you're like, fucking, and people steal your fucking food. It's so annoying. Especially when you see them eating it. And you confront them and they go, oh, well, it didn't have your name on it. Because, did it have your name on it, though? Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, and then if you obviously, it's the same thing you get with Ross. It's like, I so I would get so angry, but then I'd be the bad guy because I'm overreacting. Because it's just food. It's like, but it's my food. 